Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, so in this session, short session, so I'm going to explain some database tools, how to set up database tools on your system. If you want to practice some SQL queries, right? Or if you want to execute some SQL queries on your system, right? Or, you know, like, um, so we have a couple of database tools like uh, Toad, DBWR and uh, DB Visualizer. Just give me a second. So I'm planning to show you one database tools, how to set up one database tool and one database, you know, I have MySQL installed on my machine. I already have one separate recorded session to set up MySQL database on our local system. Right? So in this session, I'm going to limit for, uh, you know, setting up DBWR, which is a database tool. So DBWR and DB Visualizer are two popular database tools uh, after Toad, apart from Toad, right? So Toad, many of you might have already heard that. And apart from that, you have DBWR and DB Visualizer. Now we have community edition available or a trial version available for all these tools, Toad, DBWR, DB Visualizer, etc., etc. right? So now let me show you how, you know, like uh, about, uh, let me show you how to set up DBWR on your system. And you can keep this, add this to your CV as well. If you are into performance testing or whether, you know, irrespective of whether you are into manual testing or automation or performance testing or security testing. So you may need to execute some SQL queries and you may need to set up some database tools on your machine when you're, whenever you are working in any project, right? Now let's see how to set up this DBWR. So just Google search for DBWR community edition download. Just Google search for DBWR community download. And once you get the search results, go to this uh, first link, dbwr.io download. So basically community edition means trial version. Most of you may, should be already knowing, right? Now go to that link and you can download the community edition of DBWR, right? So, you know, select if you are based on what operating system you are going to use. So you can choose the installer file, whether it is Windows, whether it is Windows installer or for Mac OS, etc., or Linux. So let me download this one. So you can either, you know, directly download the installer file or a GPU version of the file, obviously. So click on download Windows installer. So, you know, like your DBWR should be downloading now. So I already have, you know, like uh, uh, installed it on my machine. I already have, you know, downloaded. I already have it downloaded on my machine. So let me quickly show you how to, you know, uh, set up that. So it should be straightforward, simple solution. So this is the latest version, guys. DBWR 23.1.5. The, that is the latest version as you can see over here when you google search for you know search for that version there it is hold on guys one second so 23.1.5 this is the latest version of the community edition so i'm you know learn, now let me quickly show you how to set up this dbwr tool on your machine and how to connect to the database if possible i'll try to cover that also in the same session or else i'll cover it in the next some other session now, once you are on this page, just click next, 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 and you know, agree for the uh, license, uh, agree for the terms and conditions or terms of the agreement. Accept for that and you know, choose for anyone who uses this computer, right? And click next. So it will be installed in C program files dbwr, as you can see here. By default, it will be installed in this path C program files dbwr, right? And click next. So it will ask for admin permission. You should have admin rights on the machine. If you already have admin rights, you'll get a pop-up saying that, you know, like, uh, do you want to allow this program to make changes to the computer? So in this screen, so you need to, you know, go with the default options. So DBWR community include Java and reset settings, right? And the space required is 141 MB. Make sure that you have enough space in your C drive. Of course, this is common for any you know program installation software installation before starting to install the operating system so just have a quick check on the disk space in your c drive right
or else you know go to properties check the properties of c drive here here you can see c drive is my c drive space is 15 gb as you can see over here now let's proceed with the installation it requires 141 mb which is fine and now this is the def by default this is the path in which this dbver will be installed and here also you can see space availability showing as 15 gb all right now yeah if you want to create any shortcuts yes you know uh, select the start menu folder in which you would like to create the programs you can also enter the name to create a folder just click on install So now you can see that DB or uh, community edition is getting installed 23.1.5. That is the uh, latest version of the community edition. So maybe 23 should be year to represent the year, you know, that using this uh, naming convention. And 1.5 are the minor releases. This is the major release and uh, this should be the minor release. Not so important information. So just click on next and, you know, we should get that. Yes. Now you can see that the dbweaver community setup was done. And if you want to create a shortcut on your desktop, yes, select this checkbox and click on finish. Now you should see a shortcut on the desktop. Just, you know, uh, type db, the two letters of this dbweaver tool. So we should get a shortcut on the desktop. Dbweaver symbol as you can see here. Now let me start the dbweaver tool by using the desktop shortcut. And I also have db visualizer on my machine, which is already installed and you know configured. So I want to show you like you know how to connect to a database once you set up the once you down, download and install any database tool, right? So I want to show you like you know how to what what parameters are required for to establish a connection to the database and you know like uh, how to configure the database connection yes. so like share subscribe to my channel meanwhile so we are, i am planning to upload some free sessions on how to create a jmeter script to insert you know to do this crud operations on the database right i hope everyone knows what is meant by crud operations so crud stands for create read update delete So these are basics that you know any software engineer should know any developer or you know uh, someone into machine testing or automation or performance testing marketing should know the crud operations so crud stands for create read read update and delete clear yes and i have gave i gave you you know a simple table showing the mapping between these database operations and http request methods over here and what is the corresponding you know uh, statement sql statement that we use and RESTful web services mapping between database operation and the RESTful web services. So we'll be covering more information on this in the live training, guys. Yeah. Now you can see that data DB were, you know, is successfully installed. And every time you start the tool, you will get some tips. Uh, so you can, uh, yeah, it's up to you whether you want to see those, follow those tips or, you know, disable those tips. All right. Now, once, you know, once you set up the database tool, let's see how to establish a connection to the database. So go to database and you should be already having some, some database on your machine, like MySQL or, you know, uh, any other uh, free database or licensed database, right? And once, you know, once you have the database running on your machine, so if you want to start the database on the machine, so go to services and so, let's say I'm having MySQL on my machine. So you need to go to services and search for that database, particular database. And by default, you know, I have set the startup type as manual on my machine. Just give me a moment. So I have set up the startup type as manual on my machine. So, and you know, so that, you know, I can stop it whenever I don't use that, isn't it? Now, you know, start the database first. If you want to try something with the database, so obviously we need to start the database by going to services. And once your database is up and running, go to database, my database connection and choose the database, you know, the particular database that you want to connect. Here you can see MySQL is the most popular database tool. 
that's why you can see that it is listed at the top and now once you select the database click on next and you need to know the database url right you have a couple of options here connect by host as well as url so host means like you need to know the server name the host name and the port number on which your database is running in case of mysql this is the default port number of mysql 330306 and you need to give your your database schema name over here and if you set some password over here we need to set that enter that password over here okay so first let me try with the host name so server host is local host this is fine local host refers to my local machine and database name is i gave some database name okay so let me quickly use that so this is my database name Konakart is one sample application that I have set up on my machine. And now, so the name that I have given is the Konakart schema. And uh, enter the username and password of your database and click on test connection. So maybe these values are wrong. So we'll see that. Okay. So go to main. While you are on the main tab, enter the username and password. So I don't remember the username exactly, but let me check. So you, there is an option to verify whether those credentials are correct or not. So simply click on this test function. So what is it saying now? My drive, MySQL driver files are missing and these files can be downloaded automatically. Select this force download or overwrite and click on download, right? Now it is connecting to JDBC MySQL, connecting main. Yes. Now you can see that the connection is successful. As you can see here, it is saying connected in so and so time, 22 seconds. This is 22 seconds approximately. And now, so this is my driver, guys. Observe here. My C this is the driver, MySQL connector slash J, MySQL connector Java, 8.0.7. All right and uh, here you can see this is my this would be my database url clear guys jdbc mysql localhost 3306 jdbc mysql is the protocol localhost is my machine name 3306 is the port number on which mysql database is running clear guys anyways now so if required you know uh, save the password so that you need not enter every time now once the connection test is successful you can click finish now let's say you want to let's say you want to execute some SQL queries. Go here and you know select new SQL script. Go to SQL Editor tab and select and choose your data source. As you can see here, Konakart underscore schema is my data source, and click on select. Right now, let's see how to execute some queries. You know, on this database. Okay. You should see you should see all the database that you are connected currently right here you can see that you know konakat underscore schema is highlighted here this is some sample database from dweaver and there are a couple of other databases on my machine uh, of course like you know if you click on this you can see what is the database to which you are connected from this dweaver tool clear guys now let's see how to run some queries to save some time i have kept some queries ready let's say for example databases let me run this query for data so enter your uh, query here here and click on this execute sql query or control enter is the shortcut for this so to run that query right clear guess now you can see that what all databases are there on my machine there are around how many databases are this? There are 12 databases on my machine. Site monitoring, sys, world, sample DB2, sample DB, et cetera, et cetera. Performance uh, schema, Kona cut schema, Kona cut underscore schema, et cetera, et cetera. So it is showing all the databases now. Now let's say I want to switch to this Kona cut underscore schema, right? So let me do that. Use this query, use Kona cut underscore schema.
to select the query and click control enter now you can see that uh, this is done successfully let me show you somewhere it should show a you know the query result right query is updated rows is zero it should be working fine now let me execute one more query so in this in my database i have a customers table i have i also have some data in that uh, database in that customers table now let me run that query So select the query and do control enter. Now we can see that it has fetched all the data from the database, right? So how many records it has fetched, guys? You can see somewhere, you see the count somewhere. You can see here, 80 rows fetched. Let me use the spotlight. You can see here at the center bottom of your screen, you can see that there are 80 rows fetched. Clear, guys? So basically there are 80 records whose customer's first name is like perf user, which is starting with perf user. So now we are able to, you know, we are able to install database tool on our machine, connect to some database, which is already installed or already, uh, you know, installed and running on our machine. And we are able to execute some queries on that database. Clear case. Now in the next session, so that's all for today I have. In the next session, I am going to show you how to use JMeter to, to run queries. Let's say, suppose you want to do some database testing, right? So first you need to connect to your database by using so JDBC connect configuration element. Let me quickly show you the steps. We need to use a JDBC request sampler. Before that, we need to use a JDBC connection configuration element, and we need to create a database connection for that we need to enter all these database url and driver class name and the table name database name etc etc of course we should have that information handy and then i will show you like you know how to so this element is used to establish a connection with the database and then if you want to execute any sql queries we need to use a sampler called jdbc request sampler right sorry this is not not java request sampler guys so we need to use a sampler called JDBC request sampler. Let me quickly show you that. So we need to add a thread group. Let me add a thread group and then to that thread group, let me add a config element and choose uh, somewhere you'll have, yes, J JDBC connection configuration element. And observe here, we need to add, you know, we need to know these details. We need to have this information hand. And now when you are working in a project, right? So you can ask your development team or anyone in your testing team to provide these details database url jdbc driver class and username and password so if you are working for the first time in that project or you know like if you are setting up this tool on your machine for the first time right so we'll continue this discussion in the next session guys uh, so uh, every weekend i am making one free session on these concepts so it takes a lot of time and effort to you know to prepare the content and you know to uh, deliver a successful uh, demo session so like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on all notification guys. And thanks for watching and have a nice day. And also following up as a following, as a follow up to this session, I'm going to you show you how to use, you know, how to insert data, how to insert some documents into MongoDB and how to do performance testing for MongoDB as well. So we are already, you know, I have already started one free training series on MongoDB performance testing. And here is the playlist URL. And uh, I already made three videos on that, on that MongoDB, right? So please go through that if you are interested or, you know, to explore, you know, what is MongoDB, how to set up MongoDB on your system and, you know, how to do performance testing for that MongoDB, clear guys. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, subscribe and turn on all notification guys, right? These are the three sessions that I already talked uploaded this is the first session mongodb performance testing using jmeter and Mong, uh, free training session yes this is session two here i covered mongodb compass and mongo shell and in third session i have covered database structure collections documents how to create or insert a document etc the next session that i am going to do on this is how to create a jmeter script to do mongodb performance testing 
So before that, I want to show you how to create a JMeter script for connecting to any relational database like MySQL. And then we will see like, you know, for non-relational database like, like this MongoDB. So thanks for watching and have a nice day, guys. And this is my YouTube channel, guys. So performance testing, live training, Pavan MGM IT training. So if anyone received this link and if you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel while watching the video, you can uh, subscribe obviously or else, you know, uh, go, to, go to YouTube and search for performance testing live training. Let me quickly show you link to my YouTube channel. Here is my YouTube channel, guys, with uh, 4,600 approximately subscribers. So subscribe and turn on all notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. And stay tuned to my YouTube channel for the coming up free demo sessions.